For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting, Harry True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. We are Rooted Podcast. All right, Ben, we're getting into deer season here. And you know what that means. We have to take our scent control to the max. We have to be the most serious people on this planet. Maybe. I know (laughs) you are actually the most, um, the least rather serious uh, scent control deer hunter that I personally know. And by the way, still consistently kill good deer everywhere we go. So, you know, maybe maybe we don't have to take it as serious as we think. What do you think there? Man, I think you should always consider that. But for me, I'm just not as serious on it because, man, I just like hunting. You know, I just like being in the woods, you know. And for me, if if you have to worry so much about every little tiny thing, what's the point? You know, I want to be able to just go sit out in the mm-hmm. woods and enjoy it with you, with my family, with my brothers, you know, that's what I want to do, man. And like you said, we have been all over the country and killed a lot of deer together and never once used scent control. I mean, man, I remember the time in Oklahoma, dude, I smelled awful. It was so hot on that trip (laughs) and the sweat. Oh my goodness. I mean, it just smelled like a high school locker room in that blind, you know? It was terrible. Yeah, but, yeah. When, listen, you know, whenever you get three bearded rednecks in one hot, confined <laughs> space, it can get pretty, pretty rotch in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it definitely does that. But you know, um, man, but you know, we still killed that buck, and that was a really mature deer. He was a six year old buck. Still killed mm-hmm. him. But let's look at all the sides. Let's look at all the the avenues, the angles. So, in your mind, what is scent control? So, a few things that can go into this, right? <clears throat> the number one thing that you have to do, and now, you know, I'm more specifically talking about whitetail deer hunting. So, as all of us know, uh, deer have crazy good noses their nose is a million times better than mine will ever be so keeping that in mind you always have to play the wind and what do i mean by that what what i'm saying is if you have a deer that you know beds let's just say you have a property and the deer beds in you know the southeastern right part of the property okay if you know you have a stand that's positioned above it and the wind is blowing right right into that area where you know that deer is maybe not the best idea in the world to sit there that day right but if the wind's in your favor right not totally blowing where you pretty much know he is probably an optimal opportunity to hunt that deer now so that's part of what scent control is, right? Is playing the wind. Um, and then, of course, if you're hunting uh, like on a ridge or big mountains here, like we have in Tennessee, the rising thermals in the morning, the falling thermals at night also go into effect. But I think for the most part, scent control is just really using the natural factors to your advantage. And maybe. You don't always have to deep dive into all this spray and washing and, you know, all the plugins and the, in the, in the, in the truck, you know, cigarette lighter plug in. And I mean, all, all that jazz, which there's nothing wrong with. And I done it and still have those products, but more often than not, just, just doing the, the natural scent control. That's, that's the way to go. So some of the scent control methods that I have seen over the years is of course you have the spray bottle, right? That has the reduction of human scent because it kills the bacteria that makes the scent. 
and you spread all over your clothes, blah, blah, blah. Spread all over yourself. Soak yourself down. And then you sweat. <laughs> and then you got to do it all over again. Yeah. Man, I mean, dude, I sweat in January. I'm always sweating. But, you know, I think that that is what the conventional form of scent control is, maybe, um, is using the squirt bottle. Now, one thing I've always used is wherever I'm hunting, let's say I'm hunting in a pine thicket, I'll go and grab a handful of pine needles and wad them up and then rub them on my suit, you know, because that is just mm -hmm. natural to what is there, to what is right there in that environment at that time. Now, another thing that you can do is they have these things, you know, the ozone makers that you can put in there with you. I don't know if that's a popular thing or not. You know, we don't really use much of that. Um, that's just one other option that you can use. You know, like you were touching on earlier is you can even put your clothes and do all the ozone in like the closet that you have. And you still mm -hmm. get busted by deer sometimes. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, like I can do my, my little closet that has a plug in, you know, scent killer in it. You know, I can, I have a portable little scent crusher thing, right. That hangs in my blind. I can run all this stuff. I can spray, I can wash my clothes. I can take the shower with the body wash, all that jazz. And what I've come to notice is it's not that it doesn't work. I'm not going to say like it is 100% defective because it's not, I've, I've had it hunts where I'm like, man, the wind was kind of blowing at that deer and that deer had no idea I was there. So, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I've also done all that and the wind is blowing right at this old nanny doe and she does the old stomping of that front leg when you know it. Uh Oh, this better pull is not the trigger good. immediately. That, yeah. I mean, cause she's fixing the blow. So, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've had both instances, so I just don't think it's this, this foolproof way of like, if I spray this bottle, that deer cannot smell me. I don't think that that's 100% the case. Well, I think it also has a lot to do with the time of year, right? So when they're in the rut, they're less likely to care about your scent. A buck is a far less likely to care about anything other than chasing that doe during that time of the year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's, that's one thing to consider as well. But, but man, you know, I also want to tell a story real quick. Um, talking about the spitting dip Please. on a deer. I have done that more than <laughs> once. There was a time in my life where I dipped a lot. I mean, two cans a day. And, yeah. you know, everybody kept telling me, oh, you're going to scare them deer by spitting on the ground. You're going to scare them deer. Pfft. I ain't never scared a deer from spitting dip on the ground. There's, in fact, this one spike that walked right up under my stand, and I leaned out over the platform, and I let out a little spittle right on his back, and he just looked around like, what was that? Oh, didn't even know Probably I was, it it was, was that old Copenhagen wintergreen. It had a smell. Mm. And man, he never paid no attention to it. In fact, there was another instance where this particular deer walked up and sniffed the spit pile on the ground and didn't even run. You know, they didn't go anywhere. They just oh, kept on about wow. their business. You know, I mean, it was another young buck, and maybe they're just curious and dumb like I was when I was young. Probably still am a little dumb, but, you know. Uh, <coughs> but, you know, well, man, I think. <clears throat> no, I was just going to just it, whenever you were telling that story, uh, it just reminded me of, of this. this there, there's this old, old dude, you know, in the neighborhood. I know, obviously, like just just an old timey deer hunter, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Phillip. This guy, I mean, chain smoker, dude. Like, I mean, that dude, there wasn't enough cigarettes in the day for that guy to fit in, you know? Yeah. And that guy has killed so many big deer. And I always used to ask him whenever, I'm like, man, how did that deer not smell you? And he's just like, 
That deer doesn't care about that smoke. That dude has killed more big deer smoking a cigarette than I've ever have with any sort of, you know, control. And this is a little off topic, but I've always wondered if this correlates somehow. So when you're muzzleloader hunting, I've had plenty of times where there's a group of deer out in a field or an opening or whatever, right? And I, and I, and I shoot the deer, I shoot a deer, you know, obviously muzzle loader a bunch of smoke happens and all those other deer just stand there like the smoke just confuses them and they don't know what's i wonder if like that little puff of smoke like from a cigarette or something hmm. confuses them like i, I wonder know. if it's the same core i yeah you know, i really don't know and i know that's I a little know. off topic of from the from the scent control but you know it just reminded me you're your story just reminded me of Mr. Phillip and uh, shooting big deer while he's smoking. I'm not. I I do not recommend you you smoke cigarettes while you deer hunt or at all. But uh, it worked for Mr. Phillip. So yeah, we're not condoning <laughs> the use of tobacco in the deer yeah, woods. You know, no, you don't I would not have do that. to. You don't have I'm just to say or smoke or anything like that. You know, um, it sounds like I've been smoking for 80 years right now. I apologize to everybody listening. I have been dealing with a cough for the past couple of days and it has torn my throat up. So, um, but man, on that same topic, I know a lot of people who kill deer consistently mm -hmm. with a cigarette or five hanging out of their jaw. You know, it just doesn't affect the yeah. deer. And I just wonder what scent actually uh, does affect a deer. Is there a certain kind that we produce? Is there a certain smell? I mean, I don't, I don't well, know what the answer to that is. I mean, I don't either, but I, I also think that potentially what, what happens is in the off season, right? When we're checking trail cams and we're, you know, cutting shoot lanes and mm -hmm. hanging stands and putting out minerals and yada, yada. Um, maybe we don't take scent control as important as we should. And what I mean by that is, you know, I don't mean spraying down and all this and that, but maybe we go to the gas station and then straight to the woods. Maybe we go from eating a, you know, eating a Big Mac and then going straight to the woods and we're carrying all these different human scents. And then, and then we bring that in during deer season and they associate that smell with, you know, the smell from just a, a few short months ago and and they know it's you know not animal that's a good point but i'm going to mention this i just had this this thought that came through my head uh, basically i think i figured it out but i could be wrong so we spend all this time in the summer right planting food plots mm -hmm. putting out minerals checking trail cams all that stuff all the time. Sure. And then as soon as hunting season happens, everybody freaks out. And it's like, oh, you can't go in the woods. That big buck's going to be gone. But you've been in there every single week, all summer long and all spring long. And that buck's still on camera. And then you slip out yeah. and you don't go back in there for months or weeks or whatever. And then, then they're like, oh, well, they're gone now. You know, they're not used to your smell anymore. They're not used to you sure. being there. They're not used to the sound of your side by side. You know, it's like for us in Tennessee, you know, we can't bait, but we can put minerals out. And by minerals, I mean pure salt or trace minerals, correct? That is the law, right? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. So what I would do is if you're going to go and boot something through the woods, Take a little thing of pure white mineral, you know, or salt, just some pure old salt and go freshen up your mineral sites with just some old salt. You know, at least, at least that is giving you something to, for those deer to realize, sure. Hey, when I hear this, when I see that, this is what is happening. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you that's know, a very uh, good point. Yeah. I just think that if you let them associate, cause they're not stupid. 
Uh, I mean, they're they're not stupid creatures, man. I mean, they can smell five hundred times what we can smell, you know, and they can see a whole lot further than we can see, and and just everything that they can do is a whole lot better than we can. But we have to figure out a way to get in and out, and kill these big bucks without pushing them to the next county, and that's another issue that comes along with the territory of just running in and out of a stand, particularly in a stand. If you're sitting in one place and that vehicle's not coming and going like they're used to, that's when they're going to start realizing, oh, Mm -hmm. hey, that scent's not left. That smell has not left and we're about to blow. And that's when you crank out that old rifle right out that window. And as soon as that doe stopped, (laughs) drop her. She goes to blow and she gets dropped. Yeah. That's how that works at our farms anyway. Yep. Ain't that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. If she blows, she goes. You know what I'm saying? Straight down. Night, night. See you later, pal. <laughs> yep. Bad. I was going to let you live, and then you decided to be a dummy. So, hey, yeah. for you. Yeah, you decided to blow, so we had to call it quits. <laughs> but I will say this. Um, do I think that you can just go willy nilly and you know from from the gas station and smelling like all this crap in into the woods i I personally think that you know obviously you 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 can do that if you want to. I just think that it it, it helps you if you don't it helps you if you're if you're smart about it, right like you don't just put your hunting clothes with, you know, all your wife's frou-frou smelling pods. And I mean, dude, I've got more laundry stuff now that I live with my fiance, soon to be wife. Oh yeah. That I ever have seen. I didn't even know half this stuff. I, dude, I had no idea that this stuff was even a thing, but yes, yes. Uh, this weekend, get married. You are getting, all right, everybody. John is getting married this weekend. It's going down. I'm heading up Thursday. We're going to pheasant hunt on Friday, yeah. hang out, do a bunch of bro stuff. Heck, we may even slip in a deer hunt. And don't tell we anybody. Just might. We just might. You just never know yeah. about us two hooligans. You never know <laughs> what we're going to get into. But I do know one thing. We are going to get you married. And we are going to do it in the presence yeah. of the good Lord. That is for certain. That's right. And I am so that thankful. That is a fact. That you wanted me to be a part of y'all special day, and I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, I am very, very excited for you. Heck, I remember the first time you told me about Mags because I specifically told you, do not tell me another girlfriend's name until they're serious, until it's real. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you told me Mags' yeah. name, and I, I well, remember it specifically. Where were we even coming from? Because I remember you told me all the way back from a trip. Was it Texas? Yeah, there is, there is. No telling. Yeah, it probably. I mean, and I remember you told me right her timeline. name, and I looked. I was like, "You just tell me a girl's name." What's that all about? Well, man, I like her a whole lot. Yeah, exactly. And he was like, "Man, she's real nice. Yeah, she's man. real kind." And you know, uh, you went in to tell me about how she treated you, and I thought, "Huh, this may be the one." In fact, I remember. I think I told you. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I told you. After, hmm. I don't know if it was after I met her or after it was some trip we were going somewhere and, and she had called you. And after that conversation, hmm. I looked at you, I said, I believe you're going to marry that girl. And yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, probably. And, um, and here we are getting you married this weekend, but dude, yeah. I hate to go off the rabbit hole here of the scent control, but I'm real excited about this pheasant hunt. I ain't even going to lie to you. Dude. Hey, listen, that's the one great thing about bird hunting, whether it's turkeys, whether it's pheasant, whether it's ducks. Guess what, folks? They don't care how you smell. No. It's pretty great. No, they don't. You go in there drinking coffee and hot chocolate and smelling like a bunch of you know big dummies and we absolutely hammer the birds yeah so you know uh i get this i don't i don't know if it's even a real question but what do you think about ripping farts in the deer stand 
Oh, man. You know, I used to think about that kind of stuff, like, I got to hold this in, or like, man, I can't, you know, take a whiz off the side of the stand, or any of that kind of stuff. And now, it's like, you know, let her rip, dude. Like, yeah. that deer doesn't care. Yeah. If anything, during the certain time of the year, it may help you, because it sounds like a good butt grunt if you if you do it just right and get get the angle down. <laughs> 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 oh my god oh man you might just burn and that deer may come running in man hey listen i don't think that there's an animal on the face of this earth that don't fart and i'm just being real i know it's kind of crude and all that <laughs> stuff but i seriously believe yeah. that every creature passes gas i really do so i don't think there's I'm nothing you, man. unnatural yeah. about it you know oh. so I mean, obviously, it's going to smell bad. I mean, come on. That's, it comes from the gut. And people are going to listen to this and be like, oh, these people, they're just children. Bye. They're just 12-year-olds. Oh, yeah. Th- this is, this is, yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, this is, this is the worst hunting podcast, but it's awesome all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I am a That's what people are going to think. I have a good time, though. Yeah, I'm all about it. Hey, listen, I'm sorry we like to have fun, you know, sue me. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's why I make a better duck hunter, John, because in duck hunting, I don't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, all the, the scent control and all that stuff. But I have a question for you, and I have been yeah, really man. curious about this. So do you think that drinking a soda in the tree stand would affect that whole scent control thing? Do you think it would make a big buck slip away? No, um, not, not really. I, cause whether it's, you know, soda, coffee, whatever, a- any sort of flavor, you know, whatever. No, uh, I really don't because a lot of the times, you know, you just open it up, you know, and then it goes in your mouth and it gets closed. Like, I don't, you know, I don't think a lemon lime, whatever, or, uh, you know, a Coca-Cola is going to do anything that tremendous. I, I just don't think it's strong enough to affect you. anything. Yeah. I was just curious. What you about know, you, man? Do you think, I don't, I don't really care. I, I'm going to drink one anyway. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, you know, I can't tell you how many times you've drinking Coca-Cola or, you know, a legend energy drink or yes. Anything dude, those, like that, and dude, we still about, shot to your eye. I mean, speaking about energy drinks, man, Legend is phenomenal. I absolutely love their energy drinks, and it's because, you know, and they don't sponsor this podcast. It's just they're good friends of ours, and it's really good, mm-hmm. you know. And yep. I tried it at the World Deer Expo, and it was just, man, it was smooth. It was so smooth, and the flavor was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And the best part is, is there was no crash. You know, like most energy drinks, you'll drink it and then you're just dead at three o'clock in the afternoon. There was no crash on this one. Um, But I will say that aside from the drink actually being phenomenal, the people behind Legend are are just as awesome to be around. Jason Green, man, he is a he is a phenomenal human. I mean, he's he's just a great dude, and he's been really good to to the show and uh, the television show, and uh, just been a good friend, you know. And they now Legend does sponsor the television show, but they have not taken the dive into the podcast yet. So <laughs> I think I think they will though when uh, they hear know. us giving props out over here, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, so the bottom line is. I don't think you drinking something in the stand is going to affect anything. I think uh, drinking in the stand or the blind, whatever, uh, I think you more so have to worry about the sound, right? Whether it's, you know, like this bottle of water, right? You're crinkling or yeah, it's, crinkle. you know, the little or the little, you know, of the soda or, or yeah. the crack of the can. So like the actual sound and then the actual movement mm-hmm. like of you taking a drink, I think that those two things you have to worry about more than 
the scent part as far as the drink parts concerned but um yeah i just i just don't think it's that big of a deal oh you know i think everything you've said is is pretty accurate because i do think you need to worry about your scent if you are um a really hardcore deer hunter i'm not i'm just not a hardcore deer hunter so don't take my advice and hunt like i hunt because (laughs) I just, I'm not your conventional deer hunter, man. I'm not uh, one of those dudes that, Mm -mm. you know, go out and I don't buy the scent lock or whatever it is that keeps your scent from, man, I don't even really know a whole lot about it other than the fact that I have killed a whole lot of deer in a pair of loafers with tassels on them smelling like work. I have, I've killed a pile of deer. I mean, a pile of them in a red flannel. Jeez. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Fred, I think Fred Bear put it best, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he essentially just said, you know, sit down and, 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 sh- and, you know, hush. That's the, uh, that's the best form of camouflage. And, I promise you Fred Bear wasn't wasn't spraying down with and washing his clothes and all this scent control stuff. I promise you he was not doing that. So, no. you know, and neither were all the Indians and, you know, all that kind of jazz. So And, hey, the Native Americans. I just. Uh, <clears throat> they're phenomenal hunters. Yeah. And that's how they lived. Uh, Yeah. That's their food source, you know. Yeah. They were. They. They were pretty decent at it, I would say. Yeah. That whole say, hunting thing. I, I would say they were pretty solid at it. And then, you know, the old Americans, what we are now, came in and they done killed all the buffalo and really ruined it for everybody for a long time. So, yeah, maybe scent control is good. Maybe yeah, well, maybe everybody yeah. just don't wear scent control. So that way they can smell you and they have a better chance of living until gun season. And then it's yeah. over. That's, all that's right. That's yeah, because so you know, man, the uh thing thing for me is like I you know, I wouldn't take it not serious. You know, for me, like I do like to, you know, wash my clothes in it. I do like to, you know, not just be be a fool and you know, get gas on my boots and all that kind of jazz, but you know, I'm not super serious hardcore with it either so i think there's a healthy balance there and uh i think it all starts with using the natural elements first the wind direction the thermals your setup uh and then you know you can dive into this scent control products world um i will say the hardest thing for me as far as scent control goes uh was we were started to touch on this earlier was uh teaching my soon to be wife about how I did not want all her fancy little scent beads and mm-hmm. frou frou softeners and all that stuff on my uh, on my hunting material, I had to explain to her that there is now this new thing in the pantry called, you know, scent control laundry detergent, and it's here to stay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got to do the scent control laundry detergent know. and or use the fresh earth, you know, so you can smell like fresh plowed dirt. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with those little, those little like scent wafer things. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? That you like hang on a limb yeah. or something that smell literally like dirt. I mean, we uh, actually have friends. We've talked about them earlier. Uh, Sean Templeton, he, mm-hmm. the barber who got us together, he has products that literally smell like earth. I yeah. mean, so my my point being is like you know, you you could just literally, literally. When before you climb your tree, pick up leaves and dirt and just go, you know, rub it on you and be like, ah, cool. 
They climb up. I mean, so you know, one thing about Sean, it's just a cover scent more than anything. Yeah. So one thing about Sean that I will say, um, he has a really good idea. So his scent spray that he makes actually sticks to you and it doesn't just go away after 10 minutes or whatever. Cause man, yeah. I am a huge fan of the earth scent or cedar or whatever I'm hunting close to that day. But earth scent, man, I right. love smelling like fresh plowed soil. I love it. And his stuff, man, it really, <clears throat> it really sticks to you. I don't know what his formulation is. I don't know what um, he's got going on with that, but I'm telling you, it absolutely hangs out and hangs around for a long time. Yeah. And he's got all sorts of uh, beard oils too for, for the men out there. I mean, he's, He's got all sorts of stuff that just right, He's taking care of my beard works. more than once. In fact, he is the only human that I will let shave the sides of my beard, straighten it up. That is that is it. Other than that, yeah. nobody touches my hair or my beard. It's like Samson. I can't let Delilah get a hold of that <laughs> hair. <laughs> it's bad news if someone yeah. gets a hold of that, of those <laughs> locks. Dude, the hair's got to stay. It's got to stay for him. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. But nonetheless, I, mean, um, I think what yeah. our point is here is that you need to just get out and hunt. Don't be so worried about what yeah. everybody else is saying. You know, formulate your own opinions. Trial and error. That's what we've done is trial and error. We figured out what works for us as a team, and we roll with it. We just stick with it because mm -hmm. not every person is going to have the same experience as the next guy. You're always going to have to find your own little section, your own little routine and technique that works best for you and what you're trying to hunt. Like for me and ducks, I don't give a crap about scent control. I'm cooking bacon and eggs in the blind. But deer, you can't do that. You know, and I'm over there like in the kitchen in the morning at deer camp like, oh, hey, guys, look, I got a biscuit. Everybody's like, you're going to hunt like that? I was like, yeah, I'm <laughs> playing on it. You know? I mean, yeah, that that, kind of my, that's the idea. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I think you have to formulate your own opinion. I think you have to figure out what works best in your situation, especially with the wind and the thermals. I think playing the wind and the thermals is going to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much you spray down. I don't care how much you wash your clothes. If you don't work the wind and the thermals right, you're going to get busted every single time. Every time. Yeah, it's, you know, it's definitely just more in your favor if you just work with nature and not against it. Yeah, of course, man. And I think, so here's a tip for all these young hunters out there. Do the research and figure out what is the predominant wind on the farm that you're hunting, whether that be public land or what, just figure out the predominant wind mm -hmm. from September through the end of January, figure out what that is and set your tree stand up accordingly to that historical data. Now, is it going to blow that way every day? No, it has to be realistic. It's not going to, cause you're going to have a hard North wind. It's going to get cold. And then a South wind is going to blow it right out of there, you know, four days later. So what I'm getting at is, if you know the history and know that predominant wind, you can at least hedge your bet on being accurate most of the time and you can hunt more and maybe have a different yeah. set, a different location that is in the same area, just across the field for maybe a North wind versus a South wind or East, West, whatever, whatever that predominant wind is. I think that's what you have to really focus yeah. on is that. And I will add this, you know, and listen, I totally get not everyone may be able to get this or has the luxury of being able to, to get this item that I'm fixing to mention, but, um, <clears throat> and maybe now they can, cause they actually just came out with a, a little cheaper version, but my wise eye camera, right. Mm -hmm. Whenever it takes a picture of a deer gives me the wind and a bunch of other awesome data that I can use and, you know, puts it into a graph, but I, I, I can go on my, on my hunt control app, right? Pick 
mm-hmm. my wise whatever wise eye camera that's on there and literally it i can make it give me a graph based on wind direction right and then right. you have all this data that says you know hey on a southeast wind you have your most pictures of this buck or whatever and then there you go you know that on a southeast wind that this deer comes in this direction i need to set up this direction and boom you're ready to rock and roll i think that i think that's a really good point that you bring up because um you know you can also tag the buck that you're chasing um you can name name all of them Mm -hmm. on the wise eye system and buddy we have had those wise eyes out all over the country for years how many years has that one been in Oklahoma? Four, three, four years yeah. now? And we haven't touched it. Yeah, three, I think. We had one issue with uh, the wire that goes from the uh, the solar panel to the actual camera. But that was because a hog had brushed up against it and just unplugged it. Simply mm. just unplugged it. You know, that's all it was. And other than that, we have not had a single issue out of any of the cameras that have been out for several years now. And one thing that I really like is it uses the weather data of the specific location of that camera. It's not your local Mm -hmm. weather, your national weather. It's not any of that stuff, your county. It's the exact location of that camera is where all the data is pulled together and made into charts for you. So like us, you know, I know some people are like, oh, well, that's cheating. That's that's not good. But you know what? I don't care. I can't physically go nope. hunt and scout all the acres that that we can hunt in a year's time. There's just no way. And for us to be able to produce this podcast, produce a TV show, do all that stuff, we have to have the very best tools in our arsenal. And guess what? Waza is at the top of that list. Because it is, in my opinion, the best trail cameras on the market because they simply work, first and foremost. I mean, leaving out everything else, they just work. Simply work. And it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it really does help you with, with scent control because there are other cameras that, you know, you may get a picture of a deer every every two days of this one specific buck but it just tells you like you know the temperature and maybe the moon phase if you're lucky which those things are important as well i'm not Mm -hmm. discounting those but on the topic of scent control it's like well why why is he coming on this day and not the other two days well it may be because the wind's different yeah it very well could be and you know that's a you know because that six point that i was telling you about he hasn't come back uh-huh. except for at night. And he only shows up on a Northwest wind. That's the only time that deer comes in is Northwest wind. And we haven't had one yeah, man. since three, four nights <clears throat> ago. And he hadn't been there. He just dipped out. Mm-hmm. So if that don't tell well, you something, and that's I don't just know it, what it does. You know, oh, I'm, I'm with you. Cause there's, and listen, I've been there as the weekend warrior where listen dude you're a hard working guy or gal and you know you know me me and papa are willing to watch the kids for this three hour block window and i gotta hunt and i i get that you gotta go you don't care what the wind is that's awesome but if you have the ability to really be disciplined and not hunt that stand because the wind's not right in the long run that's gonna help you tremendously if you can yes. just be disciplined and, and, and know like, and, and if you're fortunate enough to have different stands and, you know, different farms and all that. There you go. That yawning. <laughs> I'm really going to be yawning now. Good night. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. No, whoops. Whoopsie. Um, but no, man, I agree with you a hundred percent, but you know, one thing you can do also is you can do temporary sets, you know, like there's the, yeah. You know, you can throw up a a set of ladder sticks real quick and shimmy up and hang a tree stand real fast. I mean, it's not not uncommon. That's the great part of like, yeah, like like a climbing stand or like a saddle that you're getting into this year. It's not like it's that difficult. I mean, 
No, man, you can have a saddle set up and functional within 10 minutes. I mean, yeah. it's not a hard deal. You Ready go in roll. midday, throw it up, done. Or with the saddle, you can just walk up to a tree and be like, oh, that looks like a good tree. Cool story. And then you just start climbing. Put your sticks on there and start climbing your way up, such platform, and you're ready to go. It's just that easy. Um, there's a there's 150 million different excuses of why you don't do this, why you don't do that. But I think mm-hmm. if you play your wind right, you play your thermals right, and you truly study that buck and figure out which, like you said, which day he's coming and why he's coming that day. Typically speaking, a mature buck is always going to come with the wind in his face. So he can smell everything. Yeah. He is going yep. to show up that way. So the best thing to do is to figure out how you can intersect his trail before he gets to your scent. That is how you do that. Yeah. You have to intersect him before he gets to you and your smell. And sometimes that can be pretty dang hard as it's been proven here for the past three weeks now, trying to kill this whole six yeah. point that I have deemed pirate. Uh, he, he definitely <laughs> whiffed me that first day, boy, he went to, or something went to blowing. I'm sure it was Odo. I thought you just step on out here. It'll be not good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, man. Well, and I'll tell you this, um, another thing that we, we do is uh hunt out of blinds a lot whether it's a you know a cheap pop-up or it's a very nice you know nice like box blind or a homemade one that i have right whatever it is it's like man having having four walls and some windows that can help you out a lot by keeping your scent in there and also just not letting a lot of it out yeah i mean obviously you're gonna have some that still creeps out just a little bit right yeah, but, it's not foolproof. No, but it's going to really reduce the amount of scent that's just willy nilly everywhere. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, mean, I think you should take the steps and try, but I, like I said, I'm going to drive this point home. You have to worry about your wind and your thermals. That's, that's just it in a nutshell. You can spray down all you want to, but as soon as that sun hits you, you're going to start sweating. You're going to have to shed layers and then, you know, it's just like, well, there's the human scent. Boom, right there again. Because I've sweated, even yeah. just a little bit, you're still sweating. So my thing is, is just yeah. play that wind, do your homework, and make sure that it's in your face. I mean, you want to do, if the, if the wind is in your face, and that's the right wind for those particular deer that you're hunting, you're going to be a lot better off harvesting an animal than you are just doing whatever and throwing caution to the wind if you will yeah i'm right there with you i mean it's it's basically natural elements first and then all your other set control product because and and if you want to do them all like i have done before it's not going to hurt i just don't think it's going to be the uh you know end all be all i think that's the whole the whole point of this yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that, man. I don't think any form of scent control is the end-all, be-all. But with that being said, I'd say uh, we appreciate y'all listening in, tuning in to this episode of The Rooted Podcast with your boys, John Wisemuller and yours truly, no hairy redneck. Thank y'all for listening. We'll see you next time. All right, guys, make sure you uh, check in. All the, all the rooted television, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for listening.